So here is the last dedicated Russia 2018 World Cup video uh, with my statistical review. And I think it's fitting uh, in many ways because I am going tomorrow on a very short vacation. Have posted quite a few videos because of that because I surely not going to make videos during that time. But I'll try to keep it up uh, afterwards. Uh, what this video is about is a statistical review, the one that I've been spoiling uh, for quite a while. Um, finally finished the uh, presentation that you will see now with the slides, just a little bit ahead of what you're gonna see. I think I wanna spend the time here that I can go then quickly through the teams. Um, first off, all the teams are sorted by the performance index and I'll start uh, with the worst one where I grade, where I give out grades is kind of grade F. We'll start first up until grade A to the best team according to the performance index. Um, just a quick reminder what is the performance index. For the performance index I take my pre-tournament uh, projections uh, according to pro probabilities and take the actual result and then I compare the probabilities um, of underperforming meaning having a result that is worse than the one uh, that is actually achieved was what was the probability ahead of the tournament before that and the probability of overperforming meaning taking the current result was the probability of achieving a result that's even better equal or even better than this result and the difference goes in the performance index with minus one being uh, the worst possible performance, almost unthinkable, and plus one being a dream performance that no one ever thought about. So roughly that's the scale. Zero would be an average performance. Uh, you could see, say, you could say performing as expected since there are only seven stages, you know. Uh, if you're in the C, then you performed as Expected. Then in addition, I present uh, individual game numbers of, uh, of the team in question. Um, that gives us an idea of how the games went. Uh, on the left side, you will always see the upset index, which is very similar to the performance index, but on an individual game level, uh, where I compare the actual result to an average result of that kind. Um, so if this index is very negative, then uh, this is a big upset. Uh, and this index is between uh, negative 0.5 and 0.5. I did this for consistency with others. Uh, if uh, it is as expected, it goes in the positive. So the more uh, positive the result, the index is, the more expected the outcome of that game was. So uh, that should give you a good idea of um, how surprising the actual result were. And I take this time uh, goal difference into account as well, where I took um, Asian handicap odds uh, and compared the goal difference to the Asian handicap odds. And if it's far off this um, Asian handicap odds line, uh, then this decreases the upset index further. And lastly, there is the form index, which is similar to the upset index, but now on it's not taken the uh, entire game, but it takes the um, uh, performance of that particular team. It is computed by using my model, taking uh, computing the expected points, and then subtract the uh, and subtract the expected points from the actually achieved points. So for a win, you get three points subtract uh, the points that were expected. If this is really high, then uh, this is a good form. If it's low, it's a bad form. Again, I adjust by goal difference as well. So to kind of take into account a heavy win or a heavy loss. Um, of course, if you win, you have a high form value for that particular game. If you lose, you have a low form value, but it kind of differentiates. If you as an outsider uh, lose by only one goal, you'd still get a substantial value. Can be, I think I've seen up to 30%. Uh, but if you win only by a goal and if you're a high favorite, then this gives you a lower 
uh, performance value than the 100% that usually is given for that case. So just taking things into account there uh, gives us also a better feeling of how good was the performance, how uh, kind of you can see the quality of the performance. Um, if it's 100% and this was as good as possible, uh, according to how the calculations are actually going, it can be that the uh, value goes above 100%. I just don't display that, but I might um, do that at a later stage. I know that the highest performance value that I got was, I think, 107% by Korea against Germany. Just as a heads up, that was the best performance given the pre-match expectations. Well, I hope I didn't confuse you too much with that. Just as an explanation for the numbers, you will see them now. Uh, negative numbers below are always point to the left, positive to the right. Again, upset index, negative numbers. This is an upset. The more negative, the bigger the upset. The more positive, the more expected that result was. And for the form curve, yes, if it's closer to zero, it's probably a loss and a differential loss. Uh, draws are also rarely at the 50% mark because a draw gives you only one point, so it's 33% on the point scale. So also not that high, but then if you go to a win, uh, yeah, under 100% is perfect. If you just scraped out a victory as a, a favorite, then yes, they'll be on the lower end scale. With all that, let's go straight to the numbers and dish out our first grades. As I said in the intro, the first grade we'll be dishing out are the Fs. And of course, there's no other team that was more disappointing than Germany with an upset index of minus 0.98. This is about as low as it can get um, uh, that I've seen so far, uh, from what I've seen so far. It's also the first time and that a team that I don't necessarily cheer for lands that low on this performance index. Uh, usually the lowest was one team that I really cheered for, like Italy in 2010, the Netherlands in 2012, Spain in 14, and Austria in 16. Um, when we look at the upset index, uh, we can see that uh, the Korea result and the Mexico result were big upsets and hence very low performances. Only the Sweden result is the one that uh, stands out for Germany as something that was about to, expect, to be expected. Um, let's go further. Poland, also a very disappointing finishing last in the, in, in the group. The games themselves were not that upset. Uh, maybe the Senegal defeat and yeah they were favored against Colombia but it was not that big they got the win against Japan which was the only real performance but in the end it didn't count much so yeah Poland also very low index given the pre-tournament expectations Egypt and now we're getting in the area where the indices are not that low anymore but still if you finish less in the group you're about to have a low index as in Egypt here um, the only upset was act and mainly because this was expected, uh, losing to Russia also kind of expected. Uh, maybe the line was a little bit contributing to, to this being a little bit more the upset this side. Uh, but being upset by Saudi Arabia in the last game, that basically did Egypt in and you can see it was steadily going down. Next one, Iceland. This is the one where I'm a little bit, yeah, is this really an F? Given pre-tournament expectations, we didn't expect Iceland in last place in the group. Therefore, um, they have this low index. Uh, if I look at the overall tournament, the first two results were kind of upset. And this is the big uh, downer for Iceland. They got the big point against Argentina. This is a draw where they actually get uh, over 60%. So this is a really, really good performance. But then the others were not so great. They were favored against Nigeria and lost and also with a second string team against Croatia, although the result was kind of expected, they didn't manage to win. So for that reason, Iceland will get an F. Now let's go to the Ds. So those are still bad performances, but not as bad as the previous ones. Costa Rica is one that is actually... Oops, um, all their results were kind of expected. Maybe the small upset that they had was against Switzerland here, uh, where they managed to draw. So they were continuously getting better, but still overall uh, finishing last never gives you a good performance. 
Morocco. Um, yeah, this was doomed from from the beginning when they really lost to Iran. Then they had two good showings against the big boys, uh, especially the draw against Spain, where they also got a really high uh, um, form value, over 60%. So that kind of saved Morocco a little bit. Uh, but yeah, they were overall disappointing finish for them. Panama. Um, this is now the ones we didn't expect much from Panama. All the results that we have here are expected. This one is not expected because of the um, quality of the win. England got a really, really high uh, win value. Still, Panama was such an outsider that even with that, they managed to get above 20-20%. Their loss against Tunisia weighed a lot more heavily. So uh, just that shows you how much an outsider Panama was. Therefore, it was not a complete failure, but it also was not a great performance. And similar goes for Australia. Um, Slight upset by Peru here, uh, because Peru was not favored by, to win by two goals. Uh, the big performance was, of course, the one against Denmark. Uh, and probably they shouldn't have gotten something from France. But yeah, overall, you finished last in the end in the group and when you had actually a chance to advance. So therefore, slightly disappointing result. Spain. Uh, this now is difficult. Uh, Spain probably gets a better result because they made it to the next round but you can clearly see Portugal that was a great showing uh, still a draw then Iran they won and then it all came off the draw against Russia uh, hurt them badly was also their biggest upset also being the 2-2 against Morocco was also an upset so Spain overall not a great performance Peru this one uh, seems to hurt a little bit, but Peru was actually right there with Denmark. So losing the first game to Denmark, that's what hurt them. Uh, against France, yes, even with a loss, you get a few points and then you made the win against Australia when you were already eliminated. But yeah, those two are slight upsets. Uh, the win, the high, not really high, but you know, the win was 2 nothing. kind of went as expected. But yeah, Peru was disappointing. Um, Argentina, of course, is also the disappointing. The only good performance they had was against Nigeria, and this was expected. Uh, against Iceland, abysmal showing, even more so against Croatia, and then against France, they acquitted themselves nicely, but you know, they were not favored there anymore. So Argentina gets a slightly better rating against Peru, just because they made it to the next round. Then we have Portugal. Also, started out well, similar to Spain, and then flamed out a little bit. So uh, the draw against Spain, that was a big performance. Uh, winning against Morocco did them good, and then uh, points came off uh, just because they were not high, as highly rated as Spain. Uh, that's why they get a slightly higher rating. Now we are also already in the middle range. Teams that performed okay-ish, uh, kind of as expected, but also didn't exceed expectations or were really disappointed. Uh, Brazil is one of those, and it tells you a lot about how highly Brazil was rated ahead of the tournament, that by reaching quarterfinals, they still get a negative rating. Um, they had a slow start against uh, Switzerland, where they were upset, then they got themselves going. You can see it was slowly, slowly, slowly building, and then uh, they were upset by Belgium, who had a performance for the ages for themselves. So therefore, Brazil still slightly on negative scale, kind of leaning towards C minus there. Uh, similar goes to Senegal, and yeah, you see Senegal uh, almost eliminated the group stage. They probably could have made more out of uh, their performance. They made one upset, and then the other two games went as expected, and the upset was just not enough. Sim that's sim simple said, and their performance was kind of going downhill. Colombia, another, that is pretty much as, as expected. You couldn't expect more from Colombia. Despite the big upset, then you had two great performances. The one against Poland was even for the eye a great performance, against Senegal not so much. You got the draw against England, you just didn't get more out of it. Uh, so the last two games were as expected. These two were actually upsets. One where Senegal got upset, one where Senegal did the upset to Poland. Uh, not Senegal, Colombia, sorry for that. And then at number 17, we have the first positive rating. So Serbia, pretty much as, as expected, you can see all the games went as expected. Uh, or more leaning to towards the expected side. 
win against Korea, uh, Costa Rica, then lost to Switzerland and lost to Brazil. Therefore, third place, what we predicted beforehand. Um, similar for Tunisia, um, the one thing, of course, is the big the win against Panama, which weighs heavily. Uh, also, everything went as expected. Uh, even the big loss against Belgium didn't cost too much on the form curve, because Belgium was that highly favored over Tunisia. Iran, uh, yeah, if you look at the form curve, it actually looks great. The problem is the results don't bear it out. There you got the big win against Morocco, where this was slight upset. You even got points off Portugal. You just lost to Spain, which was an expected result. So given pre-match expectations, yes, you didn't make it out of the group, but you perform, performed very well. You exceeded expectations. So uh, therefore, we're getting now in territory where we see a lot of positive results on the form curve um, as well. And we're already moving on to grade B. Now, these are teams that can leave the World Cup more or less happy. The first one is Switzerland, and yeah, the first two results are the, are the, are the ones that make the Swiss happy. It, you can see it's kind of a downward spiral, so this is probably a B minus, if we are honest, um, because there against Sweden they were favored, also the draw against uh, Costa Rica doesn't look that great. But the first two performances, that was something that the Swiss can be very happy about. Nigeria. Yep, <laughs> Nigeria had an overall good performance. They were uh, favored to be last in that group, uh, believe it or not. But the ratings for Nigeria were not that great. You had um, an upset against Iceland and you lost to Argentina in a tight one. Hence, the rating is not that bad. So Nigeria did quite well overall. Saudi Arabia just be uh, beating uh, Egypt in the last game gave them the great performance. They did not finish last in the group and they were favored to be dead last in the, in, in, in the group. Um, the Russia result was too high, hence this goes to the upset side here slightly. Uruguay pretty much as expected. So Saudi Arabia, I said it in my video after when I reviewed the first 17 games uh, against Russia, they won't be beaten that badly. Yep, they acquitted themselves quite well in the end. Denmark, if you look at the games of Denmark, it all went pretty much as expected. Uh, yes, the slight upset against Peru, and then, yeah, the performances were not that great afterwards. But Denmark is pretty much as expected, and they got a lot out of that by just being average. Mexico, similar to Switzerland, but the quality of their upset was much bigger because uh, beating Germany of course gets you somewhere and also having a second win against Korea. Here, that's the breaking point in the tournament for Mexico, the loss against Sweden. I don't need to tell this to anyone. So first you get an upset, huge upset, one of the biggest in the, in the tournament, then you get your deserved win, and then you are upset and you get an uh, expected loss against Brazil. So story, that's the story right there for Mexico. But yeah, making it out of the group stage already, a success for Mexico, I know they wanted more. And then Korea even gets better because they didn't finish last in the group by virtue of beating Germany. Biggest upset in the tournament, Korea beating Germany by two goals. Uh, you can see the huge upset value here. The other two games went as expected where they lost the two games. Korea, we didn't expect much of them in this World Cup. Uruguay, now here we're getting in the real in the comfy territory. Uruguay had a really good uh, tournament overall. First two wins were a little bit, yeah, on the lazy side. So, so to say, typical Uruguay results grind out the 1 0 win. Then uh, against Russia, this is an upset because of the high scoreline. Against Portugal, they really performed well. And yeah, France, we talked a lot about that. That was the point where they got eliminated by the quarterfinal for Uruguay. It's, more than we expected prior to the tournament. Belgium is another one. This is really B plus and probably because I don't distinguish between third and fourth place. Belgium had an excellent, excellent tournament. There's only one bleak showing. That's the one against France where we wanted more. They had one upset against Brazil. Uh, also them winning against England at that point was also slight upset. So 
but you know second string squats this is the one that i don't count much but if you look at this really really great performances all over just uh, showing against france in the semi-final probably puts a little bit of a damper on the tournament but other than that belgium you did very very well b plus here and now we read the a's and yeah england did even better <laughs> they achieved a lot uh, by having actually not as good results as belgium if you look at it um you beat Tunisia, you beat uh, Panama, you lost to Belgium. Again, it doesn't count much. The one great performance of England was actually the one against Sweden, where everyone expected Sweden uh, to give them real trouble. Um, you lost to Croatia in overtime and you lost to Belgium. So uh, the form curve is kind of shaky for England, but given what they achieved with that, they did very, very well. Making it to the semis for England was a lot more than expected prior to the tournament. For that reason, I give England here an A-. I think it might be a little bit low if I would have to think between third or fourth place. But then I didn't. Japan. Now this we are getting the really great performances. Japan, of course, beat Colombia in their first group game. This is the biggest upset. Everything else went more or less as expected, meaning there are two losses and a draw against Senegal. Yes, but making it out of the group stage was a huge success for Japan. They almost had Belgium beat. They just Belgium willed themselves above Japan. But yeah, Japan, great showing. Russia. That's another great showing, way more than expected. I think we said, okay, second round, but then big upset against Spain. First two performances, great, got everyone going. Uruguay didn't cause too much trouble because once you beat Spain, it was all smooth sailing that, of course, Croatia beat you, was expected. Top three, Sweden made a lot out of little. They had two losses against Germany and England. But when they had to beat someone, they beat someone uh, and pulled even upset. Korea, target win. Uh, great performance against Mexico. You can see it here in the uh, upset index. This was a really good result, uh, surprising result for Sweden. They were also not the favorite against Switzerland. So there they pulled and then yes, England uh, got a comfy win, to be honest. France, of course. If you're a world champion, you're bound to get a great result. But France was among the pre-tournament favorites. And you can actually see, uh, if you look at it here, it goes all more or less as expected. First four games and then they pulled the upsets. They had a bigger than expected win against Uruguay. They were slight underdogs against Belgium. And, you know, beating Croatia by two goals was also not that expected. So the form curve, except for this Denmark result, that a game that they didn't really play, it all looks fine. And that leaves one team. They might only be runners up in the World Cup, but they are my champion in the, on the relative performance. Croatia gets an a clear A plus for us, those two, um, by winning, making it to the final as way more than we could expect from Croatia. And yes, they did as expected here in the middle of the tournament by going uh, to the semis. I mean, the route, and it was a tougher route than was, was expected from them. But yeah, you pulled a big upset against Argentina that put you on a nice trajectory. Uh, you didn't have to play for us, you could go straight uh, in the easier part of the bracket. Um, and yeah, England, that was an upset for you. So. Great, it was a draw, it then went to overtime, but yeah, good curve. And even against France, this was not too bad of a showing. Of course, losing the two goals hurt them in that department. But yeah, Croatia, your relative world champion. So that should make a trophy and send it to them. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.